Welcome back. Next up on the topic of things to discuss is random numbers. A lot of games, a lot of things out there all need random numbers to perform. Uh, there are all kinds of games with just basic dice games when you need a number from one to six. But how do you actually generate a random number? Well, there are several ways of doing it. The simplest and old fashioned way is there's a, a, a method called RAND that has been around for just about forever. So you could say random number equals rand. This will generate a random integer number and return it to you. So this is the simplest thing you can do. So if you run this, my um, build fails, standard rand. Oh no, it failed because of that. We will take care of that real quick. I got a placeholder for some stuff. There we go. You'll see we get 16807. If we run it again, hey, we get 16807. If we run it again, so this, this random number generator is generating a random number, but it seems to be always generating the same exact random number, which seems non-optimal if you're trying to play a game. If I decided to do it twice, and then print it out, I could probably get a different number. Yeah, I get a really big random number generator, 282 billion or million or whatever that is. And if I run it again, wait a minute, I'm getting the same number. So what's going on is this random number generator is kind of a very mediocre at best random number generator. It'll work for a lot of simple things. You'll want to use a bigger one and I'll show you one here in a minute. But what we can do to stop what we're seeing right now which is that constant generation of the same exact random number generator, is using a command called seed random. srand is one of these lovely little things that lets us play with uh, values in terms of what we want to shove into the random number generator. Now, note, if we, it takes an integer inside there. It's, it's a nice little way of doing it, but the trouble with this is if you put a number there, it's always going to get the same seed, which means it's always going to generate the same number slash pattern of numbers. So the way we solve this problem is we use the ctime library to come down here and give us the time. Now this is the time since January 1st, 1970 in seconds. So it's a really large integer number. So it stuffs an integer number in here, seeds the random number generator. So now when we run this, what we should see is there's a really big number. There's a different number. There's a different number. So every time you run it, you're gonna get a little bit different numbers here. And the odds of you running it at the same exact time are zero because time progresses forward and the number keeps changing. You only need to do this once You only need to do the seed once because this seeds the number generator and now it's going to use whatever it generated before to produce the next random number. So you should get a fairly random-esque type thing. Now, this gives us a nice little random number. However, if we wanted to restrain this to a range of numbers, let's say you wanted the values from one to six, like a six-sided die, the simplest method to do this is, is use this. Use the modulus operator and six. So the random number modulus six is going to give us all possible values between zero and five. So typically when you do anything by modulus, it's what's remainder. So either if it's evenly divisible, you get zero. If it's not evenly divisible, you can only get one through five because if you get another six, you get another one. Now this will generate zero through five. If we want to make it a six-sided a six die, 
we add one. And this is the simplest method of doing this. It's a zero, one through six generation of a random number for a representing a six-sided die. And every time you run it, you can see we're getting different die. Please note, you can get the same number generated over and over again with this method. And there are some, some issues with this. So you probably don't want to actually do this. But it's, it makes it easy to do. Now, you'll see it online and you'll see in other places these concepts of finding ranges of value that allow you to generate random numbers kind of cleanly using the same method. By declaring a couple of variables, min value and max value, and using them instead of hard coding a six, which I would normally make a constant anyway. So what you end up doing is taking this random number generator and generating a random number which is modulus, the max value, minus the min value, plus one. And this will actually generate for you a decent little number. And then to make sure that you start this thing off at the right spot, you have to add in the min value. And that's the formula for, for a range of values that you can declare as constants that will generate for you oh, something that doesn't work. Why are we failing? We failed because it expected an extra parentheses. There's one there. Oh, that's why. There we go. And now you're generating random numbers again. So that's how you do it. That's how you generate a random number. Now, I want you to notice that we actually have online, back to C++, it talks about the random library, which is a C++11 library, and it gives us all kinds of different generators. You can read all about this stuff, or if you really want to, you can go from C++.com's random reference to this gentleman's page, DiegoAscencio.com, which is a huge long index, which I tell you what I'll do, I will actually cut and paste and put that inside the reference for you, which is talking about how to generate random numbers in C++ that is a more efficient and more accurate way of generating a truly random number by using these random devices and MT1993-7 generators and a uniform distribution inside a range. So if you pull, plug all of this together using the random library, you'll actually end up generating a more random sequence of numbers. For our use for this class, this is the simplest way to do it. It doesn't matter which way you do it for, for our problems. But if you're doing it for real, you'd want to use something like this. So there you go. That's random number generators in a nutshell. Hope you're having a great day.